Okay. And I'm going to turn it over to my uh, good friend and colleague, Mr. Jason Bontrager. All right. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. This is my second day on Zoom class, and I'm so excited to be here. Uh, if everybody, I hope everybody can see me okay. I'm kind of looking at the computer over here, and uh, if everybody can hear me, uh, switch it over there to gallery view. I can see everybody with Brian switches it. If everybody, just give me a little wave there. Tell me you're there. Okay. Hello, everybody. Whoa, there the, look at that. It looks like fireworks going off. I see everybody from uh, 5063 Sun City Center store. Hello, students. Good to see you. And everybody else that's on from all the other stores. Boy, what a great thing we have going on here uh, with our Zoom classes. We can bring them to you right uh, to your home uh, from here. So, uh, and I tell you what, it's like, uh, it's like doing, uh, it's like playing hopscotch walking in here. We've got about 45 wires on the floor. And it's been a lot of fun, but I'm happy you guys are able to get on. If you know anybody and you were in class with some people that uh, you don't see on the classes and they're not able to get on or maybe they just don't know about it yet, make sure you tell them and, uh, and tell them how great it is. And I hope you guys are learning a lot during these classes. And today um, will be no different. I have a lot of great things to tell you. But I'm going to play a opening number here uh, before we kick off the class. And I had a little, uh, I had a, a request to do some of the music from Phantom of the Opera. So I'm going to kick it off with that, wake you up a little bit. So please enjoy a little bit of the pipe organ using the disco background. Here we go. But a big round of applause there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully everybody's awake. Uh, that used uh, actually no features that I'm teaching today, but it's still a great number to start with. I thank you everybody for being on today. So we're going to get started right with the song of the day, which is a song called Aloha Oi. Now, when I started and I used to play some concerts, uh, uh, in different stores, I, I would call this song, I'd go up and say, Aloha away, and they say, no, 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 you're saying it the wrong way. And I said, ah, I'm not sure about that, but somebody said, sir, it's not away, it's oi. So, Aloha oi, and here we go, we're going to take it to Hawaii, I'm going to play it for you, Mr. Brian, if you can show the music there. 
Uh, we're going to play it through one time, and then I'm going to talk about it. Here we go. Hey, everybody there? All right, so could everybody see the music okay? All right, we're going to get started with this. Today I'm going to be talking all about the glide. And the glide is what I was just using to make the instrument sound more authentic. And uh, if you could put the music up for just a second there, Brian. Okay. We're going to be talking about the glide. We're going to go to the first PDF of when to use it, how to use it, and all the tricks of the trade here. Okay. Okay, so the glide, this is a very simple song, um, and we're going to get right started with the music. So if you read the notes there, it says, Hawaiian music is universally loved. Touch song set up and scroll to Aloha, then touch the select button. Your instrument will now be set up for a perfect Hawaiian guitar sound. So, in this, uh, in this setting, on the very top of the music, it says, Use Song Setup. So sometimes you see in your music it says 8-beat, 16-beat. Sometimes it says smooth or mellow. Well, in this case, it says Use Song Setup. Well, before we go on, if you don't have Song Setup, Song Setup came out on an instrument called the Easy 4 and above. It's located in your screen if you have a window. You touch Song Setup. And you go to Aloha, you touch Aloha. Come on over here, Brian. We can show it right here. If you have a Sterling edition or a model uh, in the A series, you have a double window. If you have a marquee or an E series, some of those have a uh, quadruple window. So you have four screens here. But one of those will show this one. This is a single window instrument. I'm playing on the Inspire today. But right here we have song set up. When I touch it one time, it comes right up. And right there you can see the word Aloha. We're going to touch that. And sure enough, welcome to Hawaii. All right, go back over to the music for me here, Brian. So the music you'll be getting in the email for today's class, but just want you to know I just picked this song because it was relatively simple. Uh, there's only three chords. We're going to add some chords to the music to make it sound a little bit more advanced. But also um, this uh, music arrangement was actually put together for this specific feature. As you look across the music, it goes uh, F, uh, it goes F chord, A, C, F, and then there's a little asterisk there or a star. 
you can see that and I've put that there so you know that's when you use your glide. Now, the question I have from a lot of students is, hey, when do I use it? I don't know what notes to use it on. And uh, so this music here kind of gives you that idea. But this is a concept. And the concept is if you have other songs, um, which we're going to talk about what instruments use the glide a little bit later. But if you have other songs, I recommend if you say to yourself, I really want to make this sound more authentic and I want to put the glide in there. Well, take your pencil and you put a little asterisk over the notes you're going to in intentionally do the glide. Now, sometimes I get a little carried away and I'll add a couple in that's not in the music or I'll try to make it sound a little different on different notes. So it's all up to you and you have to test it out on your own. And uh, so here we go. Let's go through the music here. So we have an A, C, F, and I'm going to glide on the F note. Okay, yesterday I had a question that said, hey, what notes are you adding there? Well, this, this is a great song for this too because I'm actually adding, uh, Brian, when you come back over to me on camera, just let me see uh, just the hands here. I'm adding the notes from an F chord, um, what's called chord tones. So they're the tones, they're the notes that are in the chord. So a chord of F have a, has an F, A, and C. And so the F is just moved up here and it's still an F chord, so I'm using these three notes with a glide. And there it is. And it just makes it sound better. But let's say, he's, oh my gosh, it's too hard. I don't want to play more than one note. I'm a hobby player, Jason. I don't play more than one note. So you have uh, upper harmony. This is a different workshop, but if you have AOC, you can turn that on, and that's what it is. It's three notes. So here it is with just one finger playing all of them. without harmony with AOC. So I'm basically playing AOC manually and if you're somebody who wants to play all the notes, uh, they're just the notes in the chord. So any song you have, you can just play all the notes that are in that particular chord as harmony notes and it'll sound perfect. All right, moving right along here, we have uh, if you go through the music, and uh, Brian, if we can go back to the music, I added a couple chords. So uh, yesterday I got kind of carried away with this. This is day two of classes, and, and yesterday I did a class, and today I'm doing the same concept class, but I got a little carried away with the music, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but we will have time for questions uh, at this end of the section. But at the very last um, line, so one, two, three, four lines down, I have a little tiny line there above the staff. And I put those in the music for you to add the chord. So let me play it for you. I'm going to have you use your ear and see if you can hear me change a chord there where there's not one written yet. And I'll tell you what chord that I use. So here we go. I will start on the third line down. This microphone on so I don't have to keep turning it on and off. So if you heard it with your ear, I added a chord there and there's a line there and when you get the music you can put it in. Um, but today if you're taking notes, make sure you have something to write with and write on. Um, I'll be showing you all the notes a little later in case you miss something you can write it down. Uh, oh my gosh, I didn't hear what he said or he said it too fast, I didn't write it down. Well, I'll be showing you the notes just a little bit uh, for you to copy over. But on that line, on the fourth line down, second measure in, I added a chord called A minor 7. Anytime I see a minor chord, I always add a 7. And for this case, it just changes the music a little bit instead of it just holding on the C chord the whole time. This is a relative easy song, but again, the concept today is what uh, you're to apply to all your songs. Um, but for this one here, I added a chord just to make it sound a little different. And the A minor 7 also leads to the next chord, G7, a little stronger. So if I play it one more time. And there it is. 
So it just adds a little bit of a different sound to it, and uh, it gives you something to do instead of just holding your C chord for so long. We're moving right along here, uh, Brian, on the next page, page two of the music. I'm going to go ahead and play the whole entire page number two. Uh, actually, no, I'll just play the first half of it there, but you'll see in the music there's a couple things that are happening. I've got a line there for an extra chord. I've got a couple glide. And when I just played the song through, I used a feature called transpose. Now, I'm not going to be talking about that too much today, but I did use it. Why? Well, anytime you have a song like this, I have a lot of students and they say, boy, I got that page one down just fine, but I'm working on page two and I, I'm just having some problems with page two. Well, you know, they're the same thing. And a lot of people, uh, it takes them a while, and then all of a sudden they realize, oh my gosh, it's the same notes I played before. Well, since it's the same notes, we want it to sound a little different. And so because I'm using just the Hawaiian guitar for this song, I use transpose, and I went up one half step. And uh, before I did that, I added a couple chords in there. So we're going to do that real quick. Um, I'm going to, let's see, Brian, if you can get on this part right here. Right here, we're going to do that part right there. So I added an F chord and then a C chord right after the C chord on the front first line. And we're going to get to uh, the camera here, and I'll show you in the camera. And then I transposed it in the next measure. So if you're following me here, this will make it a lot easier for you to see. Okay, so here we are, the top of the second page. It goes F chord and then C chord. But I added in there an F and a C. And then right after that, I transposed up one half step. So now, uh, don't even worry about moving the camera. I'll just play it, and you can hear it. So here we go. C chord, F chord, C chord, transpose. Using the glide. All right, we'll stop right there. Line two, there's a little line in the music there. I'll show you so he doesn't have to switch back over. Here we go. We're getting used to the camera here. Okay, so right there on line two, that's where the A minor 7 goes again. What's really great about this is since I'm transposed, it sounds different than the last time we played A minor 7, but you're playing it the same way. So you don't have to do anything different, but it sounds really great to add an A minor 7. And there's one more spot in the music that has a line in it, which we'll get to in just a second, where you add another A minor 7. So this is really simple. The only chord that we're adding is A minor 7. And for those of you who need those notes, it's three notes. It's a three-note chord uh, for the easy play. And it's the G, A, and C. Any minor chord, you go up three notes, not counting the note of the chord. So A, if we go up three notes, it's B flat, B, C, so that's A and C. And then to make it a seven, you go down two. So we go from the A, don't count the A, you go down to one, two, and that's G. So you have a G, A, and C right there for your A minor seven chord, okay? You can also play A minor, but I challenge everybody today, if you've never played a minor 7, today's the day. Play a minor 7 chord. It's one extra note, and it makes an extra note in the harmony, in the background, and makes it sound more full as a chord. Okay, we're moving right along here. I'm going to finish out the song starting on the, if you want to go to page 2 of the music there, Brian, I'm going to start, actually, I'm going to transpose back, and I'm going to start at the top of the page and play it one more time so you can hear all these things, the added chords, the transpose, and the glide.
and you have to feed the birds. There they are. Don't forget to feed the birds. So if you have a bench that opens, yeah, there they are, the birds. You have a bench, and it opens like this one right here. They open up like this. They can, hello, everybody. It's good to see you today. Okay, you can do that for your kids at home. I don't recommend it. But anyway, if you open your bench, you put your bird seat right there. So after you're done playing Hawaiian music, you jump up, get your bird seat, feed your birds. I'm just kidding. It's such a beautiful background, though. And how many of you have ever been to Hawaii? Anybody ever been to Hawaii? Yeah, that looks All like right. nobody, I guess. Well, I tell you what, I... Uh, yeah, a few I, people there. I just put a picture of Hawaii on my phone and start playing that song, and there I am. Just as nice. No plane ride. Okay, moving right along here. So if we can go to the uh, second PDF there, Brian, of when to use the glide, how to use the glide, left kick switch, touch bar, pedal magic, all these things that we're going to talk about today. So here we go. If you can go to the page one there. This is the form that you're going to get, and uh, I'll have a typed out form that will be emailed to you, but this is my handwritten notes that you're going to see. But before we go, go ahead and go down to the first slide there, and we're going to talk about a couple of these things here. So Hawaiian guitar obviously uses the glide. If you go to Hawaii and you hear this, I mean, that's okay, but when you hear it like this, ah, now you know the hula skirts are going, You've got the coconuts, right? Coconuts make me go nuts. That's how it works, man. And in Hawaii, that's an authentic sound. Why do we use the glide? The glide makes you sound more authentic. So here we go. The next one says blues guitar. So we're going to bring out a little bit of Bill Haley in the comments from the 50s. And I do this all the time. <laughs> That's it. I did House of the Rising Sun for my concert the other day, and I got a lot of comments on, wow, I like the way you used the glide. It made it sound more realistic. So if I put that one on here, let's see here. Uh, it makes it sound more authentic. All right, so I have blues guitar listed there on the notes. The next one is pedal steel guitar, a steel guitar known as a pedal steel guitar, also known as a dobro. A dobro is held in the lap, and they use this thing on their finger called a slide, and they slide up and down the notes. And let's see here. Let's go to country and find that dobro. I think we'll have it just really quickly here, right, at number one. So... And there it is. Yeehaw. That's what we'd say in my hometown of Bartow. Yeehaw. We had a lot of bluegrass music there, Brian. I tell you what. And uh, they, well, we'll get to that in just a second. Oh, my goodness. We could go on with some jokes. But bluegrass music is very authentic to having sounds that slide in and out of notes, like the steel guitar. The next one, of course, is trombone. The trombone has a slide on it. Now, we call this feature the glide, but the slide on a trombone does the same thing. And all trombone players, I'd have to say, utilizes this in their playing. So you have Tommy Dorsey. I did it real fast there. But if he was playing Win the Saints. Okay, let me play it straight. Okay, that's not as showy, and it's not as, it doesn't sound like a real trombone. You would hear them slide into notes like this. Let's do a little bit of Misty here.
makes a huge difference. Of course, with that same genre, we have the saxophone. The saxophone, well, what kind of saxophone, Jason? Well, we have all of them. We have the tenor sax, the alto sax, soprano sax, even the berry saxophone, the big bass saxophone. They, they often use their lips to glide into notes, and it makes it sound, and it's a very authentic sound of saxophone. Maybe you have uh, listened to Kenny G on the soprano sax. Many of us have listened to Kenny G. You know, you fall asleep while you're listening to him. It's great music, and uh, he, he really slides in and out of notes a lot. So here we go with a little bit of saxophone. Right, moving right along, a lot of you have heard the sound of the clarinet. A lot of you have heard the sound of the famous Rhapsody in Blue introduction uh, with a clarinet. So if I go under jazz here, I think I have a clarinet on number three. And here it is. And there it is, jazz were, clarinet. Were those, were those the notes that Gershwin w wrote there? He, they, he wrote every single one of them, Brian. Okay, just he making did. sure. Yep. <laughs> All right, so the next one we have here on our notes is it says fiddle. Now, a lot of people, uh, there's a fiddle, and then you have violin. So you will really never go to an orchestra concert and hear a violin player, or go to a wedding, and you'll never hear the violin player playing like this. Let's go down here. <laughs> Right, they play the notes as a violin player classically, right? They play it straight. They don't really glide into any notes, so you'd sound more like this. Okay. So, but the fiddle players, like I did some country the other day. Oh, we, we got to bring out some country here. Oh, we'll get the toes tapping here. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, dun, dun. All right. We're going to do this right here. So if you take a fiddle, uh, which is a violin with a country twang, and you have this sound right here. Oh, that's country. I tell you what. You know, the difference is the, the fiddle players and the violin players, the violin players tend to have all their teeth, you know, and the fiddle players, they got like one tooth. But, you know, yeehaw, they know what they're doing. That's it, man. They, they slide into notes all over the place, and that's a very signature thing of fiddle players. And when you hear Carey Price, he does a lot of that stuff with, uh, with the country sound. And, and whenever I do it, I always use the glide. You can actually sound like a train if you play your C, and you just do the glide twice. All right. That's a lot of fun, man. So there's another instrument, but it's a classical sounding instrument. It's used in symphony orchestras called the cello. And what's different with the cello uh, compared to violin, it's bigger. They hold it between their legs. They play it like this, right? And it sounds like this. But cellists are very famous, and it's a very authentic sound for cellists to they glide in the notes. They slide while they play. You've probably seen some famous cello players, or maybe you've been to a symphony concert where you've seen an orchestra perform, and if you watch the cellos, they slide all over. So I'll play a little cello for you here.
All right. So any questions there? And in fact, uh, Brian, if you could go real quick to the page that shows the instruments I just named real quickly, if you're sure. taking notes, you guys can copy this over. And is what I'm going to do for this class, because uh, I'm a little ahead of, of my time, and that's okay, because that was on purpose. I really want to open this up here in a second. But so far, I have Hawaiian guitar, blues guitar, steel guitar, trombone, saxophones, all of them, clarinet, fiddle, and cello. Now, I left a comma there for input by you. Can anybody, and I really haven't thought too much about this, but does anybody have an instrument that I may have missed or that you might think would use the glide? For example, a piano. You've never seen a piano player jump up with a tuner and detune the note, retune the note, and keep playing. It's never happened and never will. The piano doesn't use glide. So that's not a good example of an of a instrument to use. Does anybody have any other uh, uh, ideas of, of what instruments uses the glide that I didn't mention? You want to open that up there and see if anybody's got yeah, any Yeah, feel idea? free to raise your hand if you know another instrument that would use the glide that wasn't listed there. Uh, Joe White said trumpet. Yep. Trumpet, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. They do you know, actually do you know the, anything about the trumpet? I don't know. Any, you know, it's been a long time, but they actually use the valves. Uh, they don't use their lips. They, they do the valves, and instead of pushing them all the way down, sometimes they'll do half the valve yeah. to slide into the next note, make some more jazz. Like Who else? Dee Dee, you had one. Accordion. Accordion. Accordion, yep. absolutely. Yep. How about uh, Marsha Busher? Did you have another one? I just unmuted you. You might have to click unmute yourself too. Oh, I guess Marsha dropped off there. Oh, we had one more and they left too. Oh, there's iPad uh, Glenn. Oh, somebody's waving at us here. Let's see. There we go. Um, Gary, did you have one? Hey, Sean. Hey. 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 Right. hey. Guitar. 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 Absolutely. I love it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we had a uh, French horn also. French yep. horn. Okay. French horn. French. Yeah, Stan, Stan French mentioned kiss, guitar French horn. And we're okay. That's good. All right. We're moving right along here. So, again, if you have an instrument and you turn on the glide and it doesn't work, well, there's a chance it may be an instrument that doesn't use the glide, and your Lowry instrument knows that well enough to not let it work. There's actually some guitars that don't glide because they're type of guitars that weren't meant to or the type of music. But again, yes, thank you so much for your input. I'll have to input that into my notes before I send it back. We had trumpet, accordion, and French horn. And moving right along here, the next thing in our PDF, if you want to show our PDF there, uh, Mr. Brian, he's, uh, he's my director over here. I tell you, we've got Howie Mandel on the phone. We're going to get a Grammy for this one, man. I can feel it. <laughs> Okay, so we got how to use the glide switch. So it's very easy, how to use glide controller. I prefer using my left kick switch or something called pedal magic. But let's talk about the left kick switch. So if you have an expression pedal on the organ, bring me back over here, Brian. If you have an expression pedal, chances are you have a left kick switch. That means that you're going to take your foot. That's this thing right here. You see my foot? Okay, you have to take off your shoe and you got to use your Boy, sock. Oh, hush. All right, Jeez. so here we go. It's fine. Everything's fine. So you got to put your sock in here, and you put your weight onto your heel. Put your weight onto the heel of your foot. The reason is if you go in flat-footed and try to move it back and forth, it's hard to do, especially if you've noticed the uh, expression pedals have, like, a rubber um, grip on them. So if you're flat, you really can't move your foot. But if you just lift your toes... Put the weight on your heel. This is kind of like we'll do a little aerobics here. Put your, everybody put your right foot out. Put your heel down. And then wave it back and forth there. And now you're doing the glide, all right? You shake well, it all about. There you go. Thank you, Sean. Those are some nice shoes there, Brian. You want to trade? We'll trade some shoes here. I don't know. About... All right, so we're going to go on in here. Put my foot in the expression pedal. Kick it to the left once again, if we can get down here. So I've got the weight on my heel. You got to play a note because, look, I'm doing it. Nothing's happening. You play a note. All right, maybe you have pest control coming over today. Oh, sorry about that if I broke your speakers. That was a mosquito. Anyway, so you have to practice doing this. A lot of people say, well, today's the day I'm going to use my glide. I'm going to play the chords and play the notes and play it with the background. And then I'm going to put the glide in the perfect spot. It's going to sound 
perfect. Well, it won't because it's not easy to do unless you sit here and just work on it. I, it took me a while. It took me a little while to get used to just going back and forth. Once you get used to that motion, you can add it any time with comfort. But until you get used to just doing it on its own, uh, it can be more difficult. So this is what we hear sometimes. Let's go back to Hawaii real quick. And I tell you, a little student comes in and she says, I'm using my glide and I'm so excited. I'm going to show you my new song with my glide. I say, okay, here we go. We're going to do some glide. Hold on there, and then they get up and they're limping away, you know, it hurt the knee, you know. So it's not that easy to do without controlling your volume or manipulating some things you don't want to. It's a very simple movement. Your weight's on the heel of your foot, and you just move it back and forth. That's it. One little movement, and it takes a little time. And I'm not making fun of any students there, but believe it or not, I do it all the time where I'll go to glide and all of a sudden my volume will go up or down. So it just takes some practice. It takes a couple times and a couple tries to get it down. Next thing, how to use the glide controller. Some of us have what's called a touch bar. This is an Inspire. So the touch bar on this one is a single touch bar. But if you have a touch bar with a little split right here, then you have a left touch bar and a right touch bar. Uh, it looks backwards on camera. Right touch bar, left touch bar. Right, whatever. Okay, so. <laughs> We have an option here in page of the features called touch bar and it's page, let's see here. Da -da. We have it on page nine. And right here in the screen, it's very simple. It says touch bar. Now on this instrument, because I only have one touch bar, it's actually set as a default to fill. So if we can get a little picture right here, Brian, I'll touch the bar now and you'll notice my fill comes on. You see that? It just went off, now it's back on. And so if you're at home and you're using your touch bar, why isn't it gliding? Well, you have to set it. So on page nine in the features, you have touch bar, you touch it, right now it's set to fill, and then you go up here to where it says glide sustain. And there it is, boy, look at all these options of our touch bar. Boy, that's a whole nother workshop in itself. But there it is, glide sustain, so now watch. magic. Now I don't use that because I have to take my hands off my cords. So if you have an instrument that has one touch bar, you have to set it. If you have an instrument that has two touch bars, it's actually set default. The glide is on your right hand side, but here's what you have to do. And it's very difficult because first you lose your note. It doesn't sound as authentic, so then if you want to do it with this hand, you got to go to your right side. And then you lose your chord, so it's kind of a mess. So if you even have two and you already have glide set on one by default, you can still go into touch bar screen, page, what did I say, page seven? And page nine, I'm sorry, touch bar. And then in there, it has two options, left and right. So you can set, if you're somebody who says, I really want to use my touch bar for my glide, I do recommend it. Now, I don't use it that way, but I know a lot of students who do it very well, and this is the trick. So you have to set it to your left-hand side so your right hand can stay on the notes, and then it's up to my chord hand to play the, the glide. So I'm going to teach you the little trick using my thumb. Everybody give me a thumbs up. Are you with me? All right, here we go. So oh, there it is. Thank you, Sean. Wow. All right. So can you see my hands right here? So if you notice there, I was able to hold my cord, not lose my hand off my keyboard. A lot of people, sometimes, especially beginners, they don't keep their hand on the keys. So every time they go to play another chord, they're like, whoop, they stop the music, whoop, where did I put my hand? They lose their spot. But this way of method of using the left touch bar for the glide and using your thumb, you can play your chords and you can hold your chords while utilizing the glide with your thumb at the same time. Try that out.
The next thing is my favorite. We have an orange button on some of the organs, and we have these things down here. And if you know what these are, they're called bass pedals. If you've ever seen Joni Monero, she plays these things faster than the speed limit on I-75 here in Florida, which is fast, I tell you. Whenever we watch Joni play pedals, well, first of all, she plays them very fast. And second, she wears high heels. And I tried it one time, and I don't recommend it for anybody, but she can kick these things as fast as you've ever seen playing the right notes. But most of our students do not play bass pedals because it's difficult and the instrument does it for you. And so a lot of students think, well, the bass pedals look really pretty and they probably just help the organ from falling over. I think that's actually true. <laughs> if you took them off, I think the organ might be a little heavy. Uh, but honestly, whenever you, uh, they do more than just playing the bass. So here's a little bass line. Okay, and that's why I don't play bass pedals. That's about as good as I can do right there. But if you turn on a feature called Pedal Magic, you can do all kinds of magical things with these pedals. So here we go. We have Pedal Magic, and we're going to turn on Pedal Magic. We're going to go to Feature Page. Uh, let's see. This one's on page da -da, Pedals, page 7. And I have an option in the screen that says Pedal Magic, Long, Short, Get Close, Fill, and Glide. So now I had a field trip one time. We, huh? Yeah, it's on the panel of some of the instruments. If you have a fanfare or a journey, you have a panel that says get close and glide sustain. That's pedal magic. Again, see your, see your personal assistant at the store. Give us a call. We can guide you through the glide. That's great. So I showed a lady this one time, and uh, it was at a field trip, you know, and, and we used to take these great field trips. We put everybody on a really nice luxury motor coach. It's okay. You can stay down here. And uh, I showed her this feature. She said, Jason, I use my glide, but my knee really hurts, and I can't really get it to work right. And so I said, well, come on over here. I showed her what's called an easy 10. She had an easy four. But the easy 10 was the first instrument that came out that had pedal magic. And so I said, just pick out any one of these pedals right here, any one that you want. And so she, she stood right next to me, and I, I did one of these right here, and she put her foot on one of the pedals and pushed it down, lifted up. And she said, oh, my goodness, her husband was over eating one of the famous hamburgers that we serve there. And, uh, and she, her jaw was just dropped. She couldn't believe that she could at any time play a pedal, any pedal, multiple pedals all the pedals it doesn't matter it's such an easy way to do it and at that moment she said wow and her husband said oh crap and because uh, he knew today's the day we're buying a new organ because she's got to play her pedal magic and but it makes all the difference in the world in fact sometimes for concerts i'll put it down there just to have um, especially for the harder or faster songs like when i do bluegrass there's a lot of gliding going on so sometimes my foot gets a little out of control. So if I just have them set on the bass pedals, they're there all the time. So we're moving right along. Let's say if you don't have a left kick switch, you don't have a touch bar, you don't have pedal magic. Well, if I can get a little keyboard action here, uh, you can see you just go half step below. So that means that if a note is a white note, there's a black note right next to it, and you just slide into the white note that you have to play using a half step below. That's the note right before. And you notice there's no black key here, so the glide is just a half step below. And you want to go fast, so it would sound like this. There it is. So that's as close as you can get, but it doesn't sound as authentic because the glide literally bends the note and it sounds real, just like the real instrument. But if you don't have it, you can still do it by just adding a little asterisk in your music to remind you to go to half step below and back. So if I do a little bit of jazz using Tommy Dorsey on the trombone. I just did a little fake glide there by using the black key before the E and going. And you can hear them sliding a little bit. So if you don't have now, here it is with the glide. You can really hear that glide, but if you don't have it again, because the glide's taking it down a half step. And you can do it manually. So 
Anyway, we're going to go ahead real quickly here and uh, open it up for any questions at this time. Uh, Brian, if you want to go to the PDF for me, the last page will show all the notes. I'm going to go over them very briefly uh, just to reiterate everything I said, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, make sure you have questions about the music itself, chords maybe, or some any questions right. you like, or about the feature called the glide. Again, this is not for the song Aloha. This is for any song that you use any of these instruments. So once again, you can use Hawaiian guitar, blues guitar, steel guitar, trombone, saxophones, clarinets, fiddles, and cello. And then we added, of course, trumpet, accordion, and French horn. Thank you so much, class, for giving some input there. How to use the glide controller, left kick switch, touch bar, pedal magic, or a half step below if you don't have it. Put all your weight on your heel if you're using your left kick switch. Use your socks because without your socks, you can't really feel the switch. Practice moving the kick switch back and forth. So you get used to that motion. Play before or after the note. A lot of people say, do I play it before the note or after the note? It doesn't really matter. This is one way. That was after the note, and here's before the note. Activate it. It's really a personal preference, or depending on what kind of music you're playing, you might do it one way for one song and a different way for another. Uh, I can't tell you how I do it because it changes all the time. I just happen to do it when I can, and it makes it sound more authentic. Moving right along here, if you have a touch bar, use your left touch bar. So you use your left thumb so you don't lose your chords. If you have two touch bars, Marquis, Sterling's, they have a split on the touch bar. You have left and right. It's default glide on the right, but that's difficult because you have to move your hands a lot to hit that the correct way. So set it in page seven to go to your touch bar left so you can hold your chord and use your thumb. Moving along here, pedal magic. I have pedals, Jason. How do I do it? Well, you activate it through feature page seven, or if you have a fanfare journey, you have a panel that has pedal magic button. You just touch it and it activates it automatically. If you have an easy 10, you go through the feature screen pedal magic. And if you need some help, just give us a call or come on in and see us. We're here wearing our masks with the big smiles underneath them uh, to see you. So anyway, if you have any questions, make sure you ask. Uh, use any pedal on the pedal board. You don't have to use any specific one, short, long, all of them, one of them, it doesn't matter. They all will work with your foot. Any questions on the glide or the song Aloha today? Thank you, everybody, for being on again. Let's open it all up All right. Here. Looks like we have a question from Carolyn. Carolyn, you are unmuted. Did you have a question for Jason? Uh, we, we can't hear us to unmute again, so she should be able to do it on her screen. Oh, sorry. Okay. There you go. Now can you Hi, hear Carolyn. me? Hi, Carolyn. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, I have a picture on here, so just a minute. Okay. Uh, Brian, on the um, pedal magic, I have an area. Um, it has its own uh, button. Now, if you turn on the uh, pedal magic, do you have to turn... Most people don't play pedals. So if, uh, and I, I don't normally, however, if, and most of the time I have the pedal button off, if I put it on, then my pedals will, you'll hear the sound, either the black or the, uh, the long or the short uh, pedals. Do you have to activate it once you have touched the touch screen? or will it automatically put it on? I don't see how it could go on if you don't have the pedals on in the first place. So let me, let me make sure I'm, I'm getting the question right. I'll uh, come back here to me for a second. So if you're using your pedals as controllers, meaning you're not using them for bass pedals, there's right. a, a button all the way over on the left of the instrument, like on your lower keyboard all the way to the left. Right. On the Aria, it's gonna say pedal mute. If that's on, then nothing will work on the pedals. True. Bass, yeah. bass pedals or anything else. Good point. Okay. Um, if you're going to use them as controllers, you want to go to that feature page nine that Jason was showing. Right. And then as long as that mute button is not on, um, and, and if you don't have an Aria or a, a marquee or grand marquee, it's going to be called uh, pedals off, I believe. Exactly. Either pedals off or pedals mute. If that's, 
if that is on, the pedals won't work for anything, no matter what okay. you set it for. I had an experience where I um, didn't have my hand on a cord. The next thing I know, everything went well, berserk so far as the different cords. It just went, de -de 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 -de, kept going and kept going. If huh. you don't have your... If you don't have your hand on a cord or an, a note, then it won't stop it and it keeps going. So that's that's a good point right and, there. Unless, I mean, unless you have the memory turned off. If you have memory off, then the cord will stop when you release the note. Say that again. So if you have the, um, the memory function, uh, so I'd, basically the easy button, right, turns right. on three different things. It's the automatic bass, the MCS, yes. which is you know the easy play, and the memory. If the memory is turned off, then your chord will only sustain as long as you're actually holding the note for. Oh, good point. Thank you. All righty. Good questions, yeah, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have any other questions for Jason? Got one from uh, Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Hello. Oh. Well, I have a, um, an A series, which a uh, prestige, and I believe I can still set one of my pedals for um, the glide. Yes, absolutely. On the prestige, you have a single window uh, screen, just like I'm using today. You just, it's very simple. Uh, one thing to remember, once you program your pedal magic um, to go to glide, it'll stay there. Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but it'll stay as glide throughout the duration until you tell it not to do that. So you mm -hmm. go to feature button, you go to page number seven, and you have an option in your screen called pedals. And whenever you touch that, there's a option called pedal magic. There's a lot of options like long, short, get close. Yeah. So you'll have, well, you'll have a pedal option on page seven. It'll say uh, natural black, I think, or some page nine. Okay. I'm sorry, let's go back there. On the Prestige, it's on page nine. So go to your feature page nine and you'll find your pedal, um, a pedal option. And it's very simple. You just touch what says pedals and then you can see where to set it to be glide sustain. If you need any help, just give us a call. We can walk you through it over the phone. Thank you so much for the question. Okay. All righty. Well, I'm gonna see if I can convince Jason to set up one more song for us before we sign off for today. But I did wanna give a couple brief announcements. Uh, first of all, thanks again, everybody, for joining us for our weekly variety class. We had, I think, as many as over 80 people on this session, so that's really good. And we're obviously always happy to see uh, some familiar faces here. And uh, the first announcement I have is tomorrow we have our weekly Zoom musical. And I'm very familiar with the concert artist for tomorrow because it's me. <laughs> so I will be playing for you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Uh, that will be broadcast on Zoom and potentially maybe on Facebook. And uh, I hope everybody can make it. We've, I think it was either for Jason's or for Joe's show, we hit at one point 199 people. And I said, man, for, for my concert, let's, let's get over 200. Let's get over 200 people for this one. So one thing that you can do is uh, you guys are all getting the emails from Robert. So when he sends that out, Keep in mind that the concerts are not exclusive for Fletcher Music folks. So if you have a friend who you think might enjoy some, some live music, live at least, you know, uh, from, from wherever we're playing, um, but they'd like to enjoy it from the comfort of their own home like you will, send them that link. Just forward the email. All you have to do is click forward on your email and send that to anybody that you think might enjoy some music because this is just a, a regular concert. We do it every single week, Fridays at 2 o'clock. So if there's anybody that you know who might enjoy a little bit of music, please do forward them that link. I also wanted to remind everybody, or maybe tell you for the first time if you've never been there, we do have a YouTube page that's set up. Um, the reason that this is really important is because I'm recording this session right now, and we record all of the sessions that we do, whether it's a class or a product demonstration or a concert or anything and Robert uploads those to our YouTube channel. And it's really easy to find. It's youtube.com, and that's Y-O-U-T-U-B-E, youtube.com slash Fletcher Music Centers. 
So in just a second here, I'll type that link in the chat so everybody can see that. And what's really cool is you can actually click the subscribe button when you click that link and then you get alerted every time there's a new video. So it'll pop up and it'll say, you know, um, easy 10 class session or Jason Bontrager live in concert or whatever it might be. And Robert's uploading all of our content so that you guys can view it or review it anytime you like as many times as you'd like. And what uh, I thought was this was kind of cool too. We had uh, the other day, I think it was during Joe's or Jason's concert. We had like 298 subscribers on our YouTube channel. And I don't know if you're familiar with the, the way that all this stuff works, but the more subscribers, the better, right? That means our, our YouTube channel is more public. We're getting more views and of course helps support our company more. So we had like 298 and I was like, guys, go click the subscribe button. So we get over 300. Well, since then, we're over 350 now. I think at last I checked, we were like 353 or something like that. So if you haven't yet, I'll provide that link for you, or you can just search um, uh, for Fletcher Music Centers on YouTube. Please do support that, though. It's all free, and it's for you. It's for you to view or review anything that we've done. And so if you really liked that one concert or maybe you missed something in one class, that's the reason that we have it up there is, is that you guys can uh, can review that stuff. So that's my little uh, commercial for us for today. I'm going to turn it back over to my buddy Jason, and he's going to close us out with some beautiful music today. All right. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, everybody, for being on today. It's good to see you all. And uh, very exciting to be able to have an opportunity to bring music to you in your home and classes. Make sure you go home or you go to the organ today and use your glide switch. Try all the different ways and figure out the one that you like the best. I love to hear which one works for you. Or maybe this is something new for you, or maybe you've done it before, but you've learned a new way to try it out. So I'm going to end my concert today, uh, or my, my class today, with House of the Rising Sun. I did this for the concert uh, last Friday. And again, this Friday, tomorrow, uh, we have uh, yours truly, Brian Lewis, playing a concert here in Sun City Center, Florida. That's going to be broadcasted. And anytime that you want to uh, review a video, um, of a class or you want to go back and rewatch a concert or you can even email it to a family member or a friend uh, again youtube.com Fletcher Music Centers here we go with a little bit of House of the Rising Sun I'm using pedal magic for my glide and it features the electric guitar and a little bit of the uh, music from the animals so here we go House of the Rising Sun good to see everybody again today have a great day and we'll talk to you soon <laughs>
right, guys, give Jason a big round of applause. I'm putting you on the gallery view so he can see everybody. everybody. Very nice. Very nice. He's putting his mask on to be extra safe. Just want to be nice and safe here. Wear your masks, everybody. Stay safe out there. Thanks so much for being on the class with us. Check out your YouTube channel, Fletcher Music Centers. There's a big smile behind our mask, and we're so happy to see you. Um, we'll see you Thank next you. time. Thank you so much, everyone. And real quick, before we, before we all go, I have one last quick announcement. I forgot to mention this, but this is really cool. Right now, we have our very beginning Conductor Magic class, which is probably not for anybody in this class because you guys are all a little bit more advanced. But if you know somebody who would like to learn, we're offering that class for free right now. Robert said we're offering it for free. It's every Wednesday at 12.30 on Zoom. It's our brand new beginning. You don't even have to have an instrument. And it's just like this, just like the lessons on Zoom. And if you know anybody that might be interested in that, make sure that you get in touch with your local store staff. So get, you know, whether you're in Arizona or Florida, make sure to get in touch and say, hey, I think I know somebody that might want to take that class. And we just send them an email just like we do for you. They come and they can learn for free. It's absolutely free right now. We normally charge 20 bucks for the class, but this is absolutely free and that's every Wednesday. So if you know anybody who might be interested, make sure you either invite them to that or invite them to the, the Friday concerts. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys. Hopefully we'll see a bunch of you tomorrow for my uh, show at 2 o'clock. And whew, Jason's finally putting his shoes back on. Believe me. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Brian. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jason.